Hi, this is part 12 of the training video. Uh, actually, this is the last part uh, before we reach the number of 13. Um, in this part of video, I'm, I'm going to talk about arcolite modeling and calibration for <coughs> a site in located in the Indian River County. <coughs> the county um, once considered to remove septic tanks for TMDL and BMAP. To support decision making, it would be necessary to estimate the amount of nitrogen load reduction due to uh, removing septic tanks. So um, to support this effort, FDP installed a number of monitoring wells in the south and main canal area to support arcolite modeling. And we use arcolite V3 for the modeling. So this is the study site. Uh, it's located in the um, very uh, south uh, um, east corner of this con uh, Indian River County. And there are canals. Uh, this is the main canal controlling the drainage situation. And FDP installed a 10 monitoring wells in this area. And they also had a two campaign of uh, measurement uh, conducted by staff in the, in the county. Um, so one measurement was done in um, October, end of October 2015, and another measurement was made in the February of uh, 2016. So in the rest of the pre uh, presentation, we can refer the data um, as uh, data of October 2015 and data of uh, February 2016. Um, so they measured a number of things like chloride and uh, nitrate, boron and so on and so forth. Um, but we only um, limit our analysis to depths to wear table and ammonium and this is ammonia and actually um, it's uh, similar to ammonium just one uh, hydrogen um, uh, uh, proton not hydrogen, yeah, just a proton. And then a no X because they are simulated by Arcolite. Um, we first analyze water table data and then we conduct the Arcolite flow model calibration. Um, we consider a number of things and to address a number of questions. The first question is uh, whether the two sides of water table data are similar. And the answer is yes. So um, those are uh, data or uh, the water level data. Uh, for uh, nine um, monitoring wells, and one well um, is lack of uh, data uh, in October 2015. So um, the blue color is for the data ma measured in 2015, and the red data for the data, a uh, red color represent uh, for the data measured in 2016. And you can see uh, they are really similar to each other, except uh, uh, just one here for uh, monitoring uh, well one. And this is the uh, data of October 2015. This is groundwater level data for February 2016. And they are pretty much fall into this one-to-one -one, uh, line, except for well two and well six. So here is well six. Um, so we try to understand um, what makes the difference. And then we look at the precipitation. So we have the precipitation data from one uh, weather station located near the airport. Um, and then um, this is the annual average for, uh, I'm sorry, this is just a monthly precipitation from August 2015 to uh, March 2016. And you can see that the precipitation are uh, very different. Um, the amount of precipitation in February is almost twice as the amount of precipitation in October. And this is a uh, measurement uh, daily precipitation um, for um, October 2015. And this is a daily um, precipitation for February, <coughs> for February. This is just one week before the uh, measurement uh, of hydraulic head was made. And you can see that there is a big rainfall event um, before the uh, measurement uh, in uh, uh, February of 2016, and this maximum is 18. And for October, the rainfall um, is smaller, and the maximum is 5 millimeter. Uh, so as a result, because the rainfall and we are considering the shallow or superficial aquifer, the um, hydraulic head of February are constantly higher than hydraulic head of um, uh, October. And for the well 2 and well 6, um, we thought it may be an impermeable lenses 
uh, at the two wall location so that affect the uh, measurements um, of hydraulic head but overall we can conclude that the hydraulic head data of October measurement and February measurement or 2015 measurement and 2016 measurement are similar to each other and then we look at the uh, DEM and uh, measured uh, elevation uh, the first question we try to answer is whether DEM are reliable in comparison with the measured elevation so here's a measured ele elevation at the site for each well when uh, driller drill wells they have this information this is DEM um, for the well we use the 3 by 3 resolution and uh, you can see the DM is slightly higher than the uh, measured um, elevation at the site but overall the uh, um, the DM are pretty reliable for um, representing the surface or topography um, and and but uh, the DM here is way higher not that way higher but it's higher in the major groundwater level that indicate it's necessary to process the DM data so the smooth DM can represent the shape of groundwater level and so <coughs> when we do the smoothing we um, observe the same problem <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the uh, smooth DM um, uh, miss the um, um, the canal data and so uh, we, c we choose two pairs of hydraulic head for the calibration and so essentially the water flow from well MW4 to well MW3 and from uh, well MW5 MW means monitoring well to um, well MW1 <coughs> so this is <coughs> so um, we try to let the ditches especially the main canal uh, to control the water level or uh, smooth D, the shape of smooth DM um, this is a figure you have seen before so we smooth it and then we add uh, using smoothing factor 40 and then we add uh, the water, uh, water table elevation we smooth it again again and again so um, after um, doing this whole process we found out the final smoothing factor is 220 this is pretty large data it's way larger than the smoothing factor we used for um, Eggleston height in in uh, city of Jacksonville uh, we think the reason is that um, the, in, uh, the Indian River County is located in central Florida and the topography is very smooth um, so in order to get the right shape of water table you need smooth a lot of times especially you have to uh, use the canal data or ditch data to control the smoothing factor so that the shape of smooth DM is similar to the shape of water table so this is our results um, you see here if we use a small smoothing factor like 40 we got something definitely wrong uh, this is major water table this is smooth DM Th this is not one-to-one -one line and this is even with a negative slope but if you use a smoothing factor of 220 uh, with the canal data a canal elevation to uh, control the smooth DM you, you see a good match uh, and the slope is close to one so uh, this indicate that our flow model calibration is acceptable and uh, this is is contour just to show the results it do not have much uh, meaning so the contour line is the uh, water table elevation we calculated based on the smooth DM and model calibration and the red line represent the uh, flow paths and you see it uh, looks pretty reasonable that um, the um, water from septic tank flow to the ditches and then flow to the canals uh, and this is a, um, a pond uh, um, in this area um, uh, not many uh, ponds like this but the main the drainage is mainly controlled by the canals and then we analyze the uh, nitrate concentration data and conducted uh, calibration here we use arcalit v3 that include uh, with mod simulation again we uh, compare the two sets of measurements in 2015 and 2016 and, and the first question is whether the two sets of nitrogen concentration are similar and the answer is no <coughs> and you can tell here and and we have ammonia data and we have nitrate data in 2015 and 2016 uh, the data are not 
similar to each other and you can tell from this plot and this is the concentration of ammonium ammonia and ni uh, uh, nitrate in uh, 2015, this is in 2016, and this is one-to-one -one line. A lot of data are just uh, spread, um, uh, not concentrated along this one-to-one -one line, but spread out. Um, so, um, and so it's uh, and the ammo and the nitrate concentration, uh, and the ammonium concentration is relatively high, like here. The ammonium concentration could be as high as uh, nitrate concentration. And um, so this indicate again the incomplete nitrification process, and nitrate concentration is relatively uh, low. Um, that means the um, it could uh, because of incomplete nitrification, so nitrate concentration entering the water table, water table is not that high, or it could indicate strong denitrification. We're gonna talk about that later on. Why we believe there is a strong denitrification in this area. Um, the second question is, uh, yeah, so is the denitrification process complete? No, um, because we have relatively high ammonium concentration. Is denitrification process important or strong? It answer is yes. And then we um, try to understand the relation between water table elevation and ammonia concentration. Again, um, you saw this pic picture before. If water table is here, uh, a deep water table, the nitrification process will be completed. Um, and if water table is shallower, like here, and then the denitrification uh, process is incomplete, you can have relatively high um, ammonium concentration entering water table. Um, so, so here we plot the, um, well you saw this before, this is the groundwater level in 2015, in 2016. And this is ammonia concentration in 2015 and uh, 2016. So um, for three wells, uh, three and four and uh, five, nine and ten is those wells. And it, they have uh, in 2016, they have relatively high water level and and so um, it's the water level is higher in 2016 than in 2018 and as a result the uh, um, the ammonium concentration is higher in 2016 say three four uh, five nine ten and so they all have a higher ammonium concentration in 2016 than in 2015. Um, so this is also the case for uh, well uh, number two and well number eight. Um, so um, when the water table is higher in 2015 um, and the um, ammonium concentration, uh, I'm sorry, when the water table, yeah, when the water table elevation is higher than 2015, and so the ammonium concentration is higher in 2015. So this shows that ammonium concentration is lower uh, when the water table is deeper. So um, the again, it support our understanding that water table elevation uh, is a controlling factor for ammonia uh, concentration. And then um, we I try to answer the, the next question. We try to answer is that what the relation between ammonia and the nitrate concentration. Essentially, um, our conclusion is that high nitrate concentration corresponding to low ammonium concentration, um, simply because uh, when ammonium, a uh, low ammonium concentration means uh, uh, nitrification is done or is dominant, and so you will have a, a high nitrate concentration. And so in almost all wells except well five and 10, so when ammonium concentration were higher in 2016 than in uh, 2015, and then your nitrate concentration were lower. So you can see here, uh, we have both ammonium and nitrate, right? So here uh, ammonium concentration is higher and then your nitrate concentration is lower. It's on this end, this is ammonium, right? And this is nitrate. And so this means uh, 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 ammonium nitrification is just partly done because of high water level. 
Um, and so here is why we think denitrification is important. Um, we don't have the um, uh, isotope data as uh, we have uh, as in the uh, Eggleston height area, and so we cannot draw a direct conclusion. But we compare the organic carbon and to see if there's similarity of organic carbon. So this is organic carbon. Um, well. Circle gave organic matter data, so we just use it. But organic carbon is about 50% of organic matter, and this is our study area, and this is Agleson Height and Julington Creek. So we know uh, from the isotope data there is denitrification occurring at these two sites, and so our uh, philosophy or logic is that if the organic matter is similar between the our study site in the Indian River County with the organic matter in these two sites and then we can draw a conclusion that denitrification also occurring at the site. Um, so at we take the average um, so at Agalus and Height the organic matter organic matter is about 0.6, Julington Creek is about 1.69 the study site is 1.52 those are average over um, the space and then um, we use the, the calibrated denitrification rate or 0.005 for Agatha's height and Julian Creek is 0.015 due to the similarity of organic matter of these two sites so we use the same uh, denitrification rate um, a 0.015 for the Indian River County uh, site um, and this is um, our calibration of Visma uh, I said before we do not always recommend to calibrate Vismod because of lack of profile of ammonium and nitrate uh, in the video zone. But we here we tried our effort to calibrate Vismod. So what we calibrated is uh, nitrification rate because this is important um, parameter to control the amount of uh, ammonia. ammonia uh, nitrified into nitrate. So we consider two values from literature. One is 2.9, this is what we used before, and the other one is smaller, 0 0.5. I think this is also from literature. And then we pick this well uh, for calibration because this well, there is only one plume um, 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 covering this well. Sometime uh, a well is covered by several plume and so we believe this would make the calibration a little bit uh, easier and so if we use the um, nitrification rate of uh, 2.9 and then the ammonium concentration would be zero or close to zero if we use a smaller nitrification rate of 0.5 and then um, the add water table the uh, concentration of ammonium uh, would be higher, would be like a 1.23. Um, so we look at the data we have and those are um, the profile of uh, ammonium and nitrate for two different value of uh, denitrification rate. Um, so and, and we have this simulated value and then we look at our measure value and you see here those are not zero. Um, this is close to zero but this one is definitely not zero. So based on this we believe 2.9 is too large um, because this gave us almost zero ammonium concentration and then we we just use a 0.5 because it gave us um, some uh, reasonable, more reasonable, although it's not exactly the same as measured but give us more reasonable ammonium uh, ammonia uh, concentration and then we also did arc lit model calibration um, we considered four case of parameters so we change um, essentially we use the same uh, longitudinal dispersivity but consider two alter alternative values of uh, transverse horizontal transmissive uh, dispersivity and we consider um, a different value of uh, um, uh, nitrification and a different value of denitrification um, so we those are not of course this is there's an infinite uh, combination of parameter values but we just choose those based on our uh, best knowledge and so those are simulated ammonium concentration in groundwater and this is a simulated uh, ammonium concentration um, a nitrate concentration again we use this uh, MW4 uh, well because again 
um, only one plume uh, 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 covered this well. Um, so uh, based on this, we simulate the um, ammonium and nitrate concentration at this um, monitoring well. So keep in mind, uh, the VISMOD only simulate uh, the concentration of ammonium and nitrate beneath the drain field. So those values are um, simulated ammonium and uh, ammonium concentration beneath septic tank 94 whose plume covers the uh, monitoring well. And those values are simulated uh, ammonium concentration at the monitor monitoring well. That's why these two values are different. Um, so based on uh, the simulation, uh, those are uh, simulated concentration at this monitoring well. And we choose the parameter of K3 because the simulated values of ammonium concentration, both of them are within the range of the measurement between 2015 and 2016. It's important that both prime uh, uh, concentrations are within the range. Sometimes you see, um, for example, um, this value, this ammonium concentration is within the range, um, but uh, this nitrate concentration are not in the range. So that's why we think uh, the parameters of K3 is more meaningful. So that's, so, uh, and then we're gonna, this is our f um, sort of our calibrated parameter values. And then we uh, use that parameter values to simulate uh, ammonium, ammonia and uh, nitrate concentration at all the 10 monitoring wells. Um, and so this is ammonia concentration and this is nitrate concentration uh, in at the 10 wells. Um, you can see the simulation results are not that good. Um, there's some good results. So um, uh, for example, this one or this one is within the range, but this one is outside of the range. And so for th this is for ammonia, and this for nitrate, um, the simulated value uh, is higher than the measured value. Um, and some are f okay, uh, but some like this are not okay. Um, we are not, um, well this is of course, this is uh, of concern, but um, we're not too concerned about it. Maybe we're fooling uh, ourselves um, because um, th we only have two measurements, and those two measurements are um, under uh, relatively low precipitation condition, uh, as you've seen before. Um, so we think if we have a continuous measurement, maybe our simulated value could be closer to the average if we have a long-term uh, monitoring uh, program um, but this is the best we can get so uh, we just move on with the, uh, the parameter values we have although the results are not as good as you have seen for Eglison height simulation and so uh, we also uh, think about what happens for example this well one uh, you see here uh, for ammonium is okay but for nitrate is lower then uh, the simulated value is lower than the um, measured value. And we look at this uh, case here. This is a well, uh, 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 well one, and this is where it's located in in uh, in under the um, on, in Google Earth uh, satellite picture. And this is simulated results, and this is the main canal. And you can see here, this well is not covered by any plume. You see, oh, I'm sorry. So its uh, simulated value is smaller than the measured measured value because there's no plume pass through this well. So we could change it. We could say make the uh, longitude. We could change flow pass, for example, uh, to make it pass this well. Let's say flow pass. We could um, change our smoothing factor just to make the pull of uh, um. Uh, flow pass passing this passing this well, or we can change the dispersivity. Uh, this is a pretty flat, uh, pretty uh, fat uh, clot, but we can make it thinner so that the plume is gonna cover this well. But um, we could try that, but we didn't do it because um, uh, this is only for one well. For other wells, it's maybe okay. Look at those values; those are not too bad. 
those that are not too bad. We don't want uh, to to improve this calibration at the sacrifice of other um, calibration. Um, and then um, so we have uh, we ask after the calibration, we use the calibrated model to estimate um, the nitrogen load for the area with calibration data. That means it's a smaller area here. See, um, there there are ten thousand of septic tank. Um, we modeled, but this is just the area we clipped for the purpose of calibration. And so this is a simulated ammonium uh, or ammonia concentration at the water table beneath the drain field of each septic tank. This is uh, simulation results of Vismod. Um, you can see here um, along the ditches, uh, the main canal actually, um, the uh, ammonia concentration is actually lower just because the water table here is deep. Uh, you can imagine the water table going to drop uh, or decrease uh, elevation, uh, the water table elevation going to decrease um, from here down to the canal because you have a deep canal that control the water table. Um, we have a high concentration uh, inland and uh, maybe because uh, water table is high and nitrification process is not completed and that gives us a high uh, ammonium concentration. Um, and then we um, see how the uh, depths control ammonium concentration. So we consider the depths and also parameters, uh, how those um, control um, um, the ammonium concentration. Um, so we and the background here, the blue and yellow and brown and the green, um, those are soil zones. So we just hand pick two safety tank. For this two safety tank, the um, depths to water table are the same. Uh, I'm sorry, they are in the same soil zone, but their depths to from drain field to water table are different. Uh, you can see here for one, um, probably this one for this septic tank, the depths from drain field to water table is about um, 40. And for this septic tank, the depth is about 80. And so, um, and then you can see here for this um, septic tank, the denitrification is not completed. Then at the water table, the ammonium concentration is about 15 and nitrate concentration is about 40. And, um, but for this <coughs> septic tank, the water table is deep and so the nitrification process is completed. It becomes zero at water table and nitrate becomes something about 50. Um, so this shows the control of uh, the depth control of ammonia uh, tra reactive transport. We also um, uh, investigated the parameter control and we also hand picked two uh, separate tanks and their depths to water table are the same. It's about, uh, uh, we have two or three, uh, let me see, three separate tanks, right? And then you see the depths water table is all about 240 um, or 220 maybe, yeah, 220 or 240, 220, 220, 220, roughly 220, they're not exactly the same, but those three, well, uh, septic tanks are located in three different uh, soil zones, so their hydraulic connectivity and the porosity are different, and you can see that the shape of the uh, profile are different. For this one, it became, uh, it's quickly, I'm sorry, this a, a gradually uh, ammonium gradually nitrified and then becomes zero. For this one, it's quickly nitrified, um, becomes zero. In this one, uh, this is uh, at this uh, location, it's uh, uh, gradually nitrified and then quickly nitrified. Um, and so we also look at the, um, well, uh, we, we also look at the uh, Visma simulated nitrate concentration at water table and, and this is like opposite to ammonia um, so along the ditches uh, the water table is deep and nitrate concentration is high because nitrification process is completed and at this area ammonium concentration is high um, because nitrification is incomplete 
uh, as a result, nitrate concentration is low. We also plot all the data together to see if there's a pattern. There is indeed a pattern. So, and, and this is depth control. So this is the depths from drain field to water table. Um, and this is ammonium concentration. You can see um, several patterns. So here, uh, when um, the depths increase, the ammonium concentration um, uh, either uh, change quickly from this value to zero, or it could change slowly from this value to zero. So uh, this means um, it's depth control and it's also parameter control. You have either you have a completed uh, nitrification, um, but here this is incomplete, right? You see here it's it's here, and then it never goes to zero. The ammonium concentration never goes to zero, even at uh, a depth of like a four meter, right? So this means the nitrification is not completed. You still have some ammonium in the system. And for and this is for nitrate concentration, right? And again, this is depth. So when uh, the depths increase, your nitrate concentration gonna increase because of uh, nitrification, right? <clears throat> and then you have something um, like a uh, like a, a decrease, right? As you see here, the uh, um, uh, when uh, depths increase and your nit uh, nitrate concentration increase, but then it's sort of decrease it is simply because there is a denitrification at the capillary fringe. Capillary fr capillary fringe is a relatively thin layer above water table so it's unsaturated and um, I'm sorry it's it's uh, if you measure the um, uh, metric potential is negative that means it's unsaturated but the um, from <laughs> um, fluid mechanics perspective but uh, the pore space is saturated so it's an anaerobic condition so that's why you have denitrification so things seems reasonable from physical perspective and then uh, we estimated for this area of calibration, we estimated ammonium uh, load, and so um, and then here you saw this picture before. We have a number of water bodies, and which are essentially um, ditches and canals, and we have also two ponds here, 74, 75, um, and so um, here the top five water body receive 80% of total load. So one, two, three, four, and we consider this one, this is the main canal area. And then top four water body are ditches, those f uh, one, two, three, and this is um, um, top four, and there's uh, um, top four, yeah, so one, two, three, uh, never, never mind. So um, 16, 17, 12, uh, 12 is here, right? and 14, and 74 is here. Um, so the main canal receive about um, this 12, is receive about 50% of the load. And the fifth largest load is for FID 74, this is this one. And actually this is a, a pond here. And uh, we visit the pond, and this is a picture we took at the pond. You see this pond is essentially covered by um, uh, uh, phytoplankton. Uh, that means there is a good number, a good amount of nitrogen. So the veg uh, veg uh, vegetation just grow crazy. This sort of uh, um, the field survey sort of uh, confirmed that the load here is relatively high. Um, and this is the um, nitrate load again. The top five water body receive 90% of load, so you count one, two, three, four, five. This top five water body receive 90% of nitrate load, and the water body with top five uh, loadings are all ditches. So all of these are ditches, including this number 12 and number 7, 12 and 7. And this is South Canal. It received 95% of load. It's really high. And if you look at the uh, magnitude for ammonium, the maximum is only 60, but for nitrate is as high as 1600 pound per year. Pound per year. Um, so those are for the calibration area, and then uh, we also did this uh, comparison and evaluation. Um, so this figure shows again the percentage of loading of ammonium to the total nitrogen loading. So for this area, 
ammonium loading is about 4% of the total loading. It's not as high as in Agleson height you have seen. In that area is about between 10 to 20%. This is relatively low again for the calibration area and for the entire modeling area this is different. And we also compare the um, uh, reduction ratio and so this is what we did for um, Porcelusi. Reduction ratio is about 67. For um, uh, uh, Valila is about 57 and for Agleson height is about 80% and for this study is about 87%. So this is Agleson height. So those two reduction ratio are similar. And then the loading to groundwater perceptive tank is also similar. So this doesn't mean much, but it just gave us some feeling that our estimation is not too far away from other people's work or with uh, our own work. And then we um, again uh, extrapolate our modeling results are not extrapolating. We use the calibrated parameters uh, for a larger area. So um, for this, this is only for the calibration area with a couple hundreds of safety tank. And then we did it for um, the main and the south canal area. The calibration is only for the main canal area. So now we include um, main canal and the south canal. Um, and so there are um, the um, they are uh, there are uh, twelve thousand four hundred uh, seven hundred forty one sep tanks, relatively large number of sep tanks, and we use a DM resolution um, to uh, it's three meter. Again, we have uh, help from Indian River County Utility Company. They provide us the detailed canal data, so we Im incorporated into our uh, DM for uh, modeling. So those are our canal data. And so this is the estimated ammonium load for a larger area. So the calibration area is here, but this is for the um, uh, 1,200, 12,000 septic tanks. And you see here the ammonium loading is way larger. So in for the small calibrated area, it's only about 52 uh, uh, pound per year, the maximum. But here for the entire area, the load rise to about 2,000 um, pound per year. And there are some really, really high uh, areas with really, really high ammonium loading. Um, so this is for the main canal area, but this is for the area south to the main canal area. And this is, by the way, this is a, oh, this is south canal, and this is main canal. I'm sorry for the terminology. Um, so this, the ammonium concentration here are really high. and. Um, for nitrate, uh, we also have a high nitrate loading. It's also in those areas, and this is about 25,000 uh, pounds per year. Um, so we try to understand why the loading in this area are so high. And so then we go to the data. Um, oh, here, th before we explain that, uh, we're going to look at the data. So for the calibration area, the amount of ammonia loading is only 4% of the total loading. But for the large main and south canal area, the ammonium loading is about 21%. So again, this uh, indicates importance of ammonium concentration, uh, uh, calculating ammonium loading um, because of uh, relatively high water table. And so these are uh, summary about the 10 water bodies for nitrate and ammonia uh, loading we highlighted for nitrate the high loading or water body receiving high loading are those canals so this area is heavily controlled by canals and this is for um, ammonium and for ammonium most of them are located in this area um, for nitrate is spread out for the entire uh, modeling area and then we try to understand why this area has high loading for both ammonium and nitrate. And then we look at the data. Um, we try to understand um, the loading or concentration between the, uh, uh, the, the relation between the concentration and depths from drain field water table. Um, so those are uh, safety tanks located in this, uh, I'm sorry, this is the simulated um, the simulated ammonium concentration at water table by using Wismod. And so the depths from Dreamfield to water table 
is large along the canals and thus ammonium concentration is low along the canals but for this area a little bit different look at this figure um, so in this figure we show the flow pass and, and uh, water move from um, uh, septi tank into the canals into these small water bodies and then uh, we compare the regional DM and we also compare the smooth DM and you can notice that so for example here the uh, it's a relatively flat area uh, on the regional DM but on the smooth DM this is the um, there is a smooth curve and and because of smoothing the elevation here just uh, um, rise because of smoothing and so if you look at the shape of the smooth uh, DM it's very similar to an analytical solution we have so um, we have analytical solution for the head between two water body that's essentially between this pond and this canal and we draw a line here and then this is the uh, calculated um, uh, hydraulic head along this line by using an analytical solution and this shape is similar to this shape so what it means is this the um, <coughs> the um, water table here is pretty high and so there is no chance for nitrification so that all the ammonium just in in this area highlighted by the uh, dashed blue line they are um, so the, those areas corresponding to this area with high water table elevation so um, once ammonium leaves the drain field it has no chance to be nitrified and so they flow directly from um, um, sep uh, from drain field uh, to the um, surface water body as ammonium so this may explain why uh, ammonium loading is uh, pretty high in this area it's as high as two, uh, 2000 is pretty high um, so this is the end of uh, this presentation uh, or this training video so as a summary uh, we did uh, a arcolite modeling for the Indian River County um, in this uh, 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 effort of modeling, FDP drilled ten monitoring wells, but uh, unfortunately there are no, uh, there were no long-term monitoring. We only have the data for two uh, um, uh, field campaign for f uh, measuring concentration and depth of water body. And there's several things uh, very interesting here. Number one is that. Um, this site is pretty flat so for anybody been to Indian River County it's pretty flat area but Arcolit can still satisfact satisfactorily reproduce the observed water table elevation and because we use the water table or water level in the ditch to control the shape of water table so that's why we have to use a multi-step uh, smoothing to incorporate the ditch elevation into smooth DM. This is something very useful because um, uh, Florida is, uh, especially Central and South Florida, they're really flat, but Archelytes can still do the job of calibration. Um, and the other thing uh, interesting is ammonium load. Um, so um, it's pr relatively high, and it's actually higher than in the Indian River, in the Agleson Height area. So um, I think if you have data I would recommend you run Arclid V3 have Wismod um, so that the simulated load may be uh, more reasonable so with this I will finish this training video um, I recorded a total of 12 training videos um, and with uh, theoretical um, um, uh, explanation how to run Arclid, the theory behind it, and our application. So I will stop uh, this training video series before we reach the number of part 13. Um, I thank you for your watching it and uh, if you have a question you can email to me myee at fsu.edu. Thank you. Bye-bye.